Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com. And you know, there's just not that many people these days that grew up around fountain pens, which means that if you're interested in learning about them, you don't even know how much you don't know until you learn it from somebody like me. So the reason that I shoot videos like this is because I really want to share my knowledge with you new users out there. I was a new user and we've all been there, okay? So there's no judgment here. The whole point of this video is to give you a little bit of direction of maybe some pens that you should look into as your first fountain pen. Because I understand how overwhelming it can be. You know, you look at these pens online and you don't really even know what you're looking at because you don't know the terminology and all this stuff. So I'm gonna cut through all that and just tell you what my top five pens are if you're a newbie into the fountain pen hobby and you just kind of want a nice clear direction to head in. So the first pen that I wanna recommend is the Pilot Metropolitan. I freaking love this pen, okay? I knew as soon as this pen came out a couple of years ago that this thing was going to be awesome, okay? It's a great price, $15. You know, if you're coming from the ballpoint pen world, $15 might seem like a lot of money. It's really not in the grand scheme of reliable fountain pens. It's a really great pen. It's a solid writer, performs really nicely, comes in a fine and medium nib. The fine nib in particular is awesome because it's very, very fine, finer than most other fountain pens you're gonna see. It's a Japanese pen. They grind their, ground, ground, grind? Whoa. They grind their fine nibs really fine. Woo! And they're just really solid performers. So I definitely recommend the fine nibs if you are switching over from the ballpoint pen world. They got a few different color options and things like that. It's a really durable pen, and it comes with a converter too, in a pretty nice box. So it's a great gift pen. It's great if you're just getting into the fountain pen hobby. There's only a couple of drawbacks to the Metropolitan, and they're really kind of weak drawbacks, but I'm pointing them out anyway. First one is that there's only two nib options available. It used to be worse. It used to only be in a medium nib. Now it's medium and fine, so that's a little better. And the only other drawback is that the converter that comes with the pen is opaque. You can't see through it. You don't know what your ink level is until you are basically running out. However, if you want to get around that, you can swap out the converter with a Pilot Con 50, and that is clear, and you can see in there to see what your ink level is. You're just going to sacrifice a little bit, a little bit of ink capacity when doing that. The next pen that I want to talk about is the Platinum Preppy. This one is a classic known all throughout the fountain pen world, particularly because this pen is included in a lot of the four and a half ounce Noodler's ink bottles. So a lot of people just kind of stumble upon them without even realizing what they are at first. But even still, this pen has a reputation just for being a great writer. And it's super, super cheap. It's a $4 pen, under $4 actually. And it's a reliable writer. It comes in a fine and a medium nib and it's a clear pen, so you, it's kind of neat. You get to actually see inside. You can see your ink level without having to open up the pen. That's pretty cool, and it's got a really nice sealing cap, so the nib doesn't tend to dry out very often, and it, you know, it just adds to the reliability of that pen. It tends to work really nicely as kind of a first pen just getting into the hobby. It is a cartridge converter pen. Um, however, it uses platinum proprietary cartridges and converters, so Platinum's ink cartridge selection is not that fantastic in terms of their colors they offer. Uh, that's where you want to use the converter for bottled ink, or the cool thing about this pen is you can convert it to an eyedropper. I've got a whole separate video on that, but basically you add an O-ring and a little silicone grease to the pen, and you can fill the whole body of the pen with ink, get massive ink capacity, really enhance the utility of that pen. Now this pen does have a couple of drawbacks, okay? It's a Fairly durable pen, but the plastic can be a little bit brittle, so if it's really mishandled, it can break. If you accidentally drop it on the floor and step on it, it's probably gonna crack. If you drop it in the asphalt parking lot or something, it may crack on you. It's only a $4 pen, so it's not the biggest loss, but it's just something you should probably be a little bit aware of. It's only got a fine and medium nib, which, you know, is a okay range, but if you wanna get really extensive nib selection, you'll need to go kinda beyond this pen. And then the last thing is that, you know, because the pen is so inexpensive, the converter to make uh, the pen usable for bottled ink actually costs more than the pen itself. You know, that's just one thing that some people just have a hard time with. 
One pen that's really kind of uh, underrated in the fountain pen world is actually the Pilot Varsity. The Varsity is really kind of designed as like a student pen, a school pen. Um, it's a disposable fountain pen. So the whole situation with the Varsity is it's a fountain pen that comes preloaded with ink in the pen. And it's intended to be disposable because when you use up the ink, you toss it and you get another one. It comes with a decent volume of ink and you can, you can, you know, use it for quite a while. And um, you are actually able to, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people do this, hack open the pen once you're done with it and you can refill it with other types of ink if you so are so inclined to do that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that as someone brand new to fountain pens, but if you like to tinker around, you know, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to do that stuff. Um, but, you know, it's, it's actually a phenomenal writing pen. It's, it's, it's really a great introduction into fountain pens because you get an idea of how smooth writing, how reliable a fountain pen can be in the writing experience, especially if you're coming over kind of from the ballpoint world. It's going to really kind of change your view of fountain pens. There are some cons with the Varsity, of course. Um, it's a $3 pen, and I would say it looks more like a $7 pen, but it doesn't look like a $50 pen. You know, it... it it's a disposable pen and it looks nicer than it could for $3, but you know, there's certainly nicer looking pens out there, but that's okay. Um, it only comes preloaded with seven different colors. So if you want a different color or you don't particularly like the properties of that ink, well, you don't really have much of a choice. You're kind of stuck with what they give you. It's a, actually a pretty durable pen, but it um, it's only comes in one nib size and it doesn't come in a box or anything. It's just the pen itself unless you're getting the whole seven pack, which does come with kind of a flimsy disposable like pocket protector style case, but um, you're basically just buying the pen. Another great value pen here is the Jinhao X750. Now there are a couple of other models of Jinhao that are similar to this pen, like the X450 and the 159. Those are both great pens too, but I'm, I'm narrowing your scope here to the X750 so you don't get too confused with all the other similar things. X750 is great. It's an under, under a $10 pen, which is really pretty phenomenal deal. It's heavy, it's durable, and it's a pretty reliable writer. It's a standard international cartridge converter pen, which means that you can use any brand's standard international convert or cartridge or converter in this pen. So brands like J.R. Bond, Diamine, Private Reserve, they all make cartridges that will fit in this pen, which means that your color choice in cartridge form is gonna be much more extensive than it would be in a proprietary brand like Platinum or Lamy or Pilot. It does come with a standard international converter. It is Jin Hao's kind of own little standard international converter and it's not the most durable converter. So you may want to keep in the back of your mind that you want to upgrade. It's a $5 upgrade to get like the real standard international converter. Um, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind or if you have any that are laying around, you know, you may just want to consider kind of swapping that out. And then another cool thing about this pen is it's got a number six size nib, which is used in several other different pens. And even though it only comes with a medium nib, you can actually get a Goulet nib or a Noodler's nib, an Edison nib or a Monteverde nib, and you can put that in this pen to give you a range anywhere from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 and 1.5 millimeter stub. So it's an extra little thing that you gotta get, but it can really extend the utility of this particular pen. So the Jin Hao's got a couple of cons along with it. The converter that comes with it is not amazing, so you may want to consider upgrading that. It is kind of limited in its nib offerings. You can get other nibs for it, but as far as what actually comes on the pen, eh, it's somewhat limited. The pen's really heavy, so some people may have a hard time kind of adjusting to that, especially if you're writing for long writing sessions at a time. And then the last thing is that, you know, it's got limited color options. So it does come in a couple of different things and some of the colors are actually pretty neat, um, but it really could be a little more extensive. And the last pen that I wanna to recommend to you is actually the most expensive of the bunch. It is the Lamy Safari. And this is a great pen, solid reputation on this pen. It's the most expensive of the group at nearly $30. And that doesn't come with a converter either. The converter is a $5 add-on. So why is this pen worth so much more? Well, all the other pens that I talked were like super value pens. But this Lamy, man, it's got such a solid following. There's a lot of people that love this pen. And it's got some cool things going on with it. It's really durable. It's what everybody calls a workhorse pen. You know, a great daily writer. You carry it around with you. The styling is kind of cool too. Some people really don't like the styling, but other people just absolutely love it. It's a German brand, really distinctive kind of look to the pen. 
comes in a lot of different cool and fun color options. And they do limited editions, um, usually every year, every couple of years. So there's kind of a backlog of limited editions that are kind of fun to go back and try to collect. Or, you know, they keep new colors coming out every year. And it's, it's really kind of exciting to kind of keep up with that. It's got interchangeable nibs. So Lamy's got their own line of nibs that gives you versatility, everything from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1, 1.5, and 1.9 millimeter stub. So you're able to get a really diverse range of writing capabilities just with a single pen. It's a cartridge converter, so you can use Lamy cartridges or get a proprietary Lamy converter to use it with bottled ink. Another cool thing is it's got an ink window so that you can see the level of ink in your pen whether you're using a cartridge or a converter without having to open the pen up. So there aren't a whole ton of cons with the Lamy, but the biggest one would obviously be the price in comparison to these other ones. It seems like a much more expensive pen. You can certainly spend a whole lot more than this, but as a first fountain pen, it is a little bit more of an investment than some of the other ones I've mentioned in this video. However, go start searching online, look at some of the reviews of these pens, and you'll see that a lot of people think that it's really worth it. It does have a cartridge and converter, but it's proprietary, again, just like Pilot and Platinum, so your ink choices in the cartridges with Lamy are not going to be extensive. You're probably gonna to wanna to get the converter and use bottled ink, because you get really open up your options as far as what your ink choices are. So those are my recommendations for five great pens that you could start out with when you're getting into the fountain pen hobby. It's going to be pens that you not only enjoy right away, but ones that you can continue to use as you get more into your fountain pen experience, and ones that you hopefully won't really outgrow either. I've got quite an extensive pen collection at this point, and I still enjoy these pens on a regular basis. So if you've got any other recommendations or any questions, I would love to hear from you. You can leave me a comment on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau. And if you like this video and want more like it, feel free to subscribe on YouTube and you'll be notified whenever I put more out. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you spending time with me today and right on. <laughs>